Hello and welcome back to another episode of Collider Jedi Council. I'm Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff. Welcome to our Star Wars show. This is the show where we break down everything happening in the world of Star Wars. And joining me, as always, it's the Council. Tiffany Smith is not here today, but Mark 2 d he is here. What's up, Mark? That puts a lot of pressure on me to say You say Tiffany's that as if here. it makes up for yeah, it. Yeah, but now no, I'm, I'm trying. here <laughs> taking her place, which I could not possibly take the place of the Smith Lord, especially when it's St. Patrick's Day, and you have no idea what's in this glass right now. It's not even a glass, it's a cup, it's but baby I call carrots. it a glass. Sitting next to him, Obi John Kenobi John Campia joins us. I'll be honest. I totally forgot it was St. Patrick's Day. I had Did no you? idea it was St. Patrick's Day. And you Patrick's have green Day. on, though. Luckily. Oh, yes, yeah. right. Okay, so you should have lied. You knew. You knew. Somehow, subconsciously, I knew. Is it a Canadian thing? You're just not, are you not no, rooting for... No, Canadians are freaking wild about St. Patrick's Day. Oh, really? Day. I have no okay, idea good. why, but we are. All right. Now, let's get into our first topic of the day, what we do here. First, if you're brand new, this is Star Wars movie news. Everything happening in the world of Star Wars, whether it's, it could be Force Awakens stuff, the original trilogy stuff, if we want to. It could be Rogue One, Episode 8, Episode 9, anything happening, we'll talk about it. Mark, what are the talks of Star Wars movie news? Well, I got some bad news for you, Christian. Uh -oh. You are not uh -oh. going to be playing Han Solo. It uh -oh. doesn't appear that's going to be the case because we might be down to three names. These are the three names that we know are still in contention to play Han Solo in the spinoff anthology film. It could be Taron Egger. It could be Alden Eigenreich, or it could be Jack Rayner. Now, there's a few other names that have not been mentioned by name that might still be under consideration, but Christian, these look like our three front runners. What's interesting to note is that in this report as well, it was also mentioned that I believe Eigenreich and Egerton were auditioning together. They read hmm. a scene together, so maybe that indicates they just wanted to see what their chemistry was like. Maybe one gets a different role. Maybe Han Solo has a bro. What do you think of this news? Who do you like? Um, I'll tell you, though, the, the you, you mentioned it up top, and that is that just because these are the three names that are featured right now, this doesn't mean that it's their only three. There have mm -hmm. been a lot of names rumored. We, I, I was just, you know, when we talked about this months ago, I told you that I had heard how high Lord and Miller were on Terran Egerton. Then he was nowhere to be found in that initial batch. And I'm like, don't worry. He's going to pop up there. I know these guys are high on him. Pops up in a rumor a couple of uh, weeks ago. And now seems like almost official because Disney's not saying they're not denying. They're not confirming. But you, I can say until blue in the face and you guys know, and I know you're getting sick of it, but I don't care because that's the topic we're talking about. Terran Egerton is, is the guy, should be the guy in my personal opinion. However, I like both these other names. I really like these other names. That's where there's other names um, where I'm going, eh, I don't know if it goes to that guy, I'm going to be upset. And like we said, I don't know the other names that are mentioned, but out of these three, I would be happy with all three of them. Although I'm leaning towards Egerton. I'm actually, Jack Rayner is my second choice, but I do want Algenreich. Iron Reich. Iron Reich. I do want him to have a role in the movie because I think he was great. I agree with John Schnepp that he was just incredible in Hail Caesar and stole the movie from most people in it. I just don't see him as Han Solo, but that's me. John, we haven't talked yet. We've talked about this a lot on Movie Talk, but you and I haven't really discussed these names. How are you feeling about these names? Um, I, I like all of them because they're all good actors. I mean, they're, they're just all good actors. So I'm, I'm fine with any of them that get picked. Now, I a few weeks ago, I was going in to watch Eddie the Eagle. And I remember saying, I think I'm going to get a much clearer picture if I think uh, Egerton is the guy to play Han Solo or not. I didn't. I, neither positively nor negatively, because harder role to judge. It, it's a very that's it exactly. It was it's the kind of role where it was like because he and he nailed the role. He was great in it, but it was like that kind of role. It's like I can't really tell if that increases or decreases my appeal for him as being a Han Solo. Personally, this uh, Iron Reich guy jumped out of nowhere to me in Hail Caesar. I'll go one step further than Schnepp. He wasn't just the best thing about Hail Caesar. He might have been the only good thing <laughs> about Hail Caesar. Uh, well, and his, oh, chemistry with, too, yeah. his chemistry mm -hmm. with Ray Fiennes was off the charts. Look, I'm, I'm happy with all these guys. However, I'm finding myself not getting too emotionally invested in any of these names because what we've seen happen a lot and what we've seen happen especially lately is these casting announcements coming out of nowhere with names that nobody had even mentioned before, right. had never considered. We just had the J.K. Uh, Simmons casting in Goth or in uh, in Batman, uh, Justice League, whatever it is. Um, and this is happening more and more and more. So while I like all these names, there are more names, as Mark pointed out, that we just don't know what they are yet. 
I still have this sneaking suspicion another name is going to come out of nowhere and be announced that none of us had even considered. But if it's any of these guys, I'm good with it. Very possible. And I'll tell you, the thing is also, with going off your Eddie the Eagle thing, what it showed to me what the kid could do is that it is a very different role to judge off of Han Solo. Yeah. I think he's closer to finding out what he could do if you look at something like Kingsman, kind of that rogue uh, oh, absolutely. against the system. Yeah. But what it showed me that he could do in Eddie the Eagle was that he can go, he can shift himself. He can be somebody else. He can really get into character as and, and make, you, that's not Taron Egerton, that's Eddie the Eagle. You really, just the shifting of his, of his face and his mannerisms. But the big concern is, and I don't know if the answer is yes or no, can he shield his accent? That is a big question out there. We haven't seen him do right. that yet. Every role yeah. that I've seen him in, whether it be Legend or Eddie the Eagle or Kingsman, it's that thick accent. We don't know if he can shield it. Mark, what do you think? Look, I've been saying since day one that Alden Ironreich is the guy. I've been saying it since day one. You um, <laughs> said it a lot, though. Mm. I really didn't at all. No, he liked um, the other guy. He liked the. Oh, that's right. He liked the, th the, the kid from. Yeah. I've been Diversity. saying Taron right. Egerton from day one. Day uh, one right, starts right. today. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. The accent thing's a great point that I hadn't considered. It's like you just assume people can, you know, drop their accents when they want to or gain one, but it's a tough thing to do, especially to do a convincing Harrison Ford that's a very recognizable brogue that he's got going. Uh, the headshot of Ironreich, though, that it, there's a black and white one that I saw online, and I'm like, holy crap, that could be Han Solo. Really? It was hard for me to picture him in anything other than what his role is in Hail Caesar, which is definitely not Han Solo. But none of these names I'm going to be running home happy about. Like, oh, sweet, this is the right guy to play Han Solo. Like, I'm still just not sure anybody can pull it off. But I think all three of these gentlemen have the chops to be able to give us a fun intergalactic space adventure. Now, I think we'll all agree. Look, I, you can't cast somebody who's a seven-foot-tall Norwegian with long, flowing, blonde hair to be Han Solo. Right. Granted, but <laughs> I really think whether how much the actor looks like a young Han Solo is actually going to become irrelevant. I think once we get five minutes into the Han Solo movie, whoever this new actor is, I think the audience and, and all of us are intelligent enough that within about the first five minutes, our brains will adjust. It's yeah. like, okay, now this is Han Solo. We did it when they had to change um, Professor Dumbledore in the Harry Potters. We did it when they changed James Bonds. We do it when they change actors all the time. That, yeah, it's jarring for a first second. And then our minds adjust, and then we go with it. And I think all the guys they've mentioned so far, including Egerton and I, I think these guys are good enough actors that once the role starts and once the movie starts, they will get us on board with them as Han Solo. Real yeah, quick, can yeah. I ask you guys, what do you think about the, this angle where it's possible that they're testing them against each other oh, because I'm, they yeah, want to see point. the brother angle? Like, do you like I that? I do like that because I, even though I was, you know, I had said something about, I don't know if Han Solo had a brother. I never really mentioned it. Someone mentioned that he definitely had one in, in old, in Legends and, and stuff. And, and why not? If they, he doesn't necessarily have to bring it up, maybe something else that happened in his history He's that he does have. He's probably going to die. He might, we don't know anything about Han Solo's family. So maybe, yeah, it would be great if those two. Now, the other, the other wild card here is being Jack Renner. I don't like. He's been in other stuff too. Um, the one that people list as for his big credit is Transformers Four, which unfortunately <laughs> is his biggest credit. Um, and he wasn't tough great. to judge. Tough to tough judge. To he judge wasn't great in the movie, like that. but that's not that's that's not fair. Everybody looks bad in that movie. You can put Daniel Day Lewis in that movie, and it's going to look bad. Um, <laughs> but I think that you uh, you know he's been in other stuff that I remember saying. I think he out of the three of them looks the most like Han Solo. Out of the three of those guys, as I'll a young Solo, yeah. he looks the most mm -hmm. like young Solo. So. I just don't know enough about him to say he's my front runner, but I could easily go down the camp of, of Jack Renner as well, too. But as far as brothers go, yeah, I think that the two that actually look like brothers, though, out of the two of them are actually Egerton and, and uh, Ironreich, Heikenreich. Yeah, so, um, I, I'm with you. All right, moving on, Mark, what's next? Uh, well, it's been fun, uh, but we always have to say goodbye eventually to Dubrovnik. Episode wow. 8 is rap shooting in Dubrovnik, the really fun-looking place that we've talked about nonstop for the last month. Uh, Christian, they did a lot of interesting things here, most of which we didn't get a chance to see, but we saw some stuff shrouded in mystery around the streets of Dubrovnik. Uh, the point that John has made multiple times, that it looks like one of the middle-class environments that you haven't really seen that much of in Star Wars yet. So, Christian, we put a bow on our mm. time in Dubrovnik. <laughs> what are you going to remember the most? Are you going to sign my yearbook? Uh, no. I, I, we never hung out, and I'm not going to pretend that we did. Um, <laughs> That's but, the, yeah, he's, yeah. he's kidding, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Thanks so, for that special night. Yeah, right. What? <laughs> hey, wedgie, you kid. Get over here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, we hung out a lot. We're Don't get cocky. No, listen. So um, I, uh, I, I'm. It's cool to me. It says 
we're wrapped. We're done. That's a real location. Go back to quote you, John, for Force Awakens. This is real. This is happening. And that is what you should get excited about. I mean, it's like they're pushing along. Ryan Johnson is dedicated. He's motivated. They are firing through. They're, they got the this location. That means that there are scenes already shot mm. for episode eight. Woohoo! I mean, that that should get you jazzed. How do you feel? I am jazzed because it means that nothing leaked came out of this. As of yet, yeah, we got some pictures. We might have seen a land speeder. But anytime you can wrap in a location and not have anything big leak out, some huge, like, costume or story or, like, spoiler come out, that is a huge win in the land of Star Wars. And this Dubrovnik place, like, it looks like a pretty deal. Their, their chamber of commerce is going. The phones are ringing <laughs> off the hook now. People want to go visit there. It looks like a fun place to go. John? Dubrovnik. They shot some Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's new. Um, meh. No, and, and, you're not no, excited and, that they're wrapped there? I mean, no, really. I'm not, not really, and, I, and I'll tell you why. I get super excited hearing they started shooting. I'll get super excited when I hear they've wrapped shooting. And I probably would have got excited at least a little bit to hear that, hey, there's a part of the shooting that is now done. Mm -hmm. I would have been if it wasn't for the fact that my attention is somewhat distracted right now to a little film called Rogue One yeah. that is coming out. See, if, if we didn't have another Star Wars movie coming out in just months right. from now, right. we're, we're out of the years stage, we're into the month stage. If we that were the case, I'd be like, holy crap, right. they just shot, wrapped day 43 of episode eight, and now they've wrapped day 44. I would be really stoked, but because we've got that another Star Wars movie in between now and then, Something like they've wrapped a certain segment of shooting doesn't get me really jazzed. It's like, right now. where's the trailer for Rogue One? Yes, where that's exactly right, what right, is. That's right. where our attention I, I, is right I now. I get it because it's more because we're not getting this movie now for about two year or a year and a half now. So yeah. it's like, give it to me now. Um, I totally get that. Now, before we move on to our next story, I want to let you guys know that some of you might consider this story a potential spoiler. So if you don't want to hear this story, it's about a rumored planet um, that's that and there's some leaked photos, but we are going to cover it and talk about it so if you don't want to say i'll do this here's my my wave when you see me do that again that will be when you can come back so again you've been warned i don't want to hear about it mark well christian speaking of dubrovnik and maybe i spoke too soon where i said nothing major in the way of spoilers came out of this it might not be a spoiler for episode eight but you're right it looks like we might have a new planet location which is one of the reasons to maybe get john excited about dubrovnik is that it might be a new location that we haven't seen in a star wars movie before and we might have a new planet now what's happening on that new planet well christian one of the speculative theories includes a funeral procession for somebody that we know and love dearly Han Solo. Uh, as you guys know, that happened in the end of The Force Awakens, so we got to honor him somehow. Maybe that's happening on this new planet, or maybe Dubrovnik gets to stand in for something like Karelia. We just don't know. You read this story that we got, as we get a lot of our stories from StarWarsNewsNet.com, a great aggregator, and they break their own stories about Star Wars. What did you think? Uh, oh, I was confused to see. Did anybody, did Jonathan, or do you guys have, uh, or Adam, do you have a picture of that guy holding the pic, the, the picture of Princess Leia on the plane there? You don't have that. Okay. Uh, this, what does that look like? It looks like a pee-pee. Yeah. Uh, yeah, from this distance, I was <laughs> something rather phallic. That's yes. an inter interesting. Just use protection. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, that is a strange photo. But uh, the, the, the rumored pictures and the rumored leaks here, as far as being a funeral, um, I hope it's true. I really hope it's true. That would be a great way to honor not only Harrison Ford, but Han Solo, you know, mm -hmm. and to put him on his home planet. We've never seen Corellia to have it actually in uh, in film form would be really, really great. Um, I am I'm excited for the possibility of it. And, and I would like to see them. He, he deserves it. General Solo. He should go out with a big ass funeral. There should be a big thing that it's it's deserving of the hero that he was and I think it's 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 kind of showing to the audience we're honoring him he just didn't fall off the the most unsafe railing of all time <laughs> he and blow up he is going to get a hero's in his own home planet so I would hope that this is true um, John you hate this why um <laughs> no I, I it's appropriate yeah okay it's it's appropriate I mean look here's the thing I, does he deserve it yes. The character has been a beloved part of this in front. And to many people, he embodies what the franchise of Star Wars is, to a lot of people, right? Right. So it makes sense that you do it. Is it is it a little bit of milking it? Maybe a yeah. little bit. Let's, let's, let's milk the Han Solo train a little bit. But he was Maybe. the general. He was general but he's, Solo. He was General Solo, hero of the rebellion. Right. Um, so, and, you know, and consort to... 
Princess Leia, now General Leia, or whatever they're calling her at this point. Um, it makes sense. It'll be nice. I really hope. Now, the timeline is going to be very tricky here for what I'm hoping for. I really want to see Luke at Han's funeral. I really want to yeah. see that. But I don't know if the timing of it in the story like is going to pick up right away. I, right? Yeah, and if yeah. it picks up right away, I don't think Han's just hopping back up, or I don't think Luke's hopping on the Millennium Falcon right. with Rain Chewie and just zipping right back. I, I think some passage time, so unfortunately, I think we're going to have a Han funeral without Luke present. Maybe Luke just pops in like right at the end like he did in Return of the Jedi in the meeting room. He came back from Yoda's death, and he's like, oh, hey, I'm with you too. All right, let's go. <laughs> time to move. You know what this means, though, Christian? I brought the is potluck. It, if, if this is true, what this signifies to me is that we get that emotional closure to Han Solo that maybe I didn't feel as much as I thought I would at the end of Force Awakens when that death actually yeah. happens. Is now maybe I can let all those tears out that I know I have for Han Solo. I just haven't shed yet. Maybe this funeral is the one that just tugs at the heart. It's not milking, John. It's tugging. This is milking a cow. This is tugging at heartstrings. And I think that's what this scene do that is a little bit more. No, 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 give me, no, give me no. the example the of that. Children's show. <laughs> children's show. So we the the other thing that I wanted to uh, you know kind of John, what if you would assume that Luke is going to feel. Han. He like, has to know. Has to know. He has to know. But maybe that's why Ray is there, is to bring him back to the funeral. You know? Well, I think the I mean the idea is look, Leia laid it out. It was laid out for us right in the opening crawl of episode seven. Leia wants to go get him and bring him back. Right. So I have no doubt that Ray wasn't just sent to find Luke. And train. Le right. Ray was sent to find Luke and bring him home. Right. I just don't know that he's gonna if he didn't get on a ship and come home when he felt the death of Han. I don't know that he's going to be so jazzed to just hop on the Millennium Falcon right away and fly home. No, I, I hope he does, though. Yeah, no, me too. But I, I think what the, I think what the main purpose of this particular scene is going to be not only to obviously honor Han Solo, but it's also going to go into what we've all agreed is going to happen in this movie. It's going to play on the politics a little more. Oh, agreed. Um, yeah, that totally. is a political yep. funeral. It is a very political funeral. There will be political conversations happening at that funeral, leading into the ultimate um, conversation, l learning. It's a great way to introduce new characters. It's a great way to bring in, whether it's a Laura Dern, who might be a new Mon Mothma type. It's a great way to bring in people, maybe uh, Lando, who might probably show up. At, he, if Lando's not at the funeral, oh, something's come wrong. Come on. you you got to say Calrissian's dead. If, Something. If, if, Han, if, if Lando is not at right. Han's funeral, you, you have it. to say the character died 15 years ago or something. Right, or... Or, or you have to mention his name that, that you know, uh, General uh, Calrissian wanted to be here, but, you know, whatever it is, even th even that would be a stretch. I know, I, I'm with oh, you. What? That would be a huge stretch. I'm with you, but as long, but you you cannot just ignore Calrissian's name. You have to make, I, I think he's going to be at the, at the No, funeral. as you as you guys are talking about this, I'm already starting to write the beginning of episode eight in my own head. It's where maybe the crawl text says something about funeral proceedings being underway, and then that, you know, classic, the, the words fade out, and then you get the space. And then it's like a funeral procession of like spaceships, you know, yeah, with all their cool. headlights on, like that'd they do cool. on the highways. I yeah. just saw your opening crawl because I know how much you love war. Hey, I thought love you war. Funeral. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> funeral. Uh, oh, sadness. Sadness. <laughs> sadness. <laughs> all right, here, here you go. Here you go. That's that's the end of that topic, all right, Mark? What's next? Uh, well, maybe there is some sort of funeral that's happening at the sea because there were some uh, reports of just off the coast, I guess, of Dubrovnik <laughs> or Croatia. There was a a uh, ship called the Sea Star that there were a lot of alien-looking dignitaries where they were filming episode 8. Maybe somebody's ashes are getting spread into the Great Sea at some point, Christian. You see these pictures. There's a lot of goofy-looking creatures with a lot of fancy, ridiculous costumes. It looks like Star Wars political figures to me is that what you take away from these picks i don't see ashes and stuff happening uh i think that would that That'd would be, be tough that would be <laughs> tough and it'd be i think it'd start to get a little silly then it's like you keep keep it the funeral at one place but what it does um it, it brings it out i want to see star wars in a real location on the sea i mean I know we had a little mm. bit of it in you know when uh let's not mention that well camino when <laughs> yeah, he was in camino but also even that silly scene in phantom menace either in, in the, the the cgi ocean or whatever too but this is actually Relocation ocean. What's gonna? Is there a chase? You know, is it a like? What's happening there? Is it, is it because they're traveling to a particular place that they can only they know they can only travel by this new space? Not space, but just the new technology that we've never seen before. I think it's a great way to introduce a brand new world, a brand new uh, brand new technology. But I also think this will also be on Corellia. 
But what do you think? Uh, yeah, I definitely uh, like the Karelia connection, and it's just neat seeing like like you you iterated. It's like you're actually Star Wars on the high seas is kind of a cool concept, yeah. even if it is just a bunch of uh, political luminaries hanging out, saying goodbye to somebody, having a secret meeting. Like I don't know how big of a role this is going to play. I wonder though. I mean, look the the planet that looks on right now. There's a lot of water on that planet. Would it be something over there, or would it be more something mainstream? That's probably what you would go for. Yeah, I can't see th the one theory that's going around about a funeral at sea sort of thing like that that's a captain jean-luc picard kind yeah of, because because you identify him with always loving the the ancient ways of the sea and the ships and being i seamen. hated boats yeah i mean yeah. like with han solo you don't think of a guy who is really tied to his homeland right. he, he's he's yeah. a marauder he's out he there in space he's it. a he vagabond he had a no, wife never back there he didn't care about right uh, no, no, no. <laughs> not real wife um, okay, moving on. Uh, well, if you are out there and you are a fan of Shadow Troopers, hold your breath because now it has been copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, that is an amazing graphic right there. Disney has trademarked the term Shadow Troopers, and maybe it's a uh, possible connection to Rogue One. If you played The Force Unleashed, which we know Christian lost many relationships over playing that game, you may be familiar with the concept of the Shadow Trooper. They're more stealth-oriented. They have uh, more armor, I believe, too. They're basically a badass, maybe better shooting version of the classic Stormtrooper. So when you hear Disney trademarks the term Shadow Trooper, I'm surprised it wasn't already trademarked. They trademark it now. You gotta think you're gonna see a Shadow Trooper in a feature film coming soon. Uh, take it to the bank. We're definitely gonna see a Shadow Trooper. And I think that's really cool because I think that this goes back to what uh, both Pablo Hidalgo and Leland Chi said at the Canon panel during Star Wars Celebration is that just because things are legends doesn't mean they can't go back into the archives mm -hmm. and, and kind of play with stuff. And they probably, like, don't forget that these guys in the story group were also big fans of a lot of the stories that were told in the Legends period. So, and cool things that happened, and the Shadow Troopers being one of those. So they probably said, you know, I could see them sitting around a meeting, and, and whether it was Pablo or someone else or, or Leland who were just like, what if we brought back the Shadow Troopers for Rogue One? Or somebody else brought it up. Yeah, let's bring them back and then make sure it's copyrighted. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, it's not copyrighted. Holy crap, let's get on that quick. So, yeah, I think we're going to definitely get them. I think it's a great, great thing to bring them. Uh, what do you think, John? I think it would be very cool to see Shadow Troopers in Rogue One and stuff like that. Yeah. Hearing that Disney's going back and trademarking it right now, though, doesn't lead me to believe that it is certainly happening because I, you Why see a lot have done it already we, well see yeah that's the thing though but you hear a lot of times like corporations going back retroactively and and you know covering their ground and like maybe they have future plans for shadow troopers and things like that like because you think if they're going to be in rogue one you think they might have trademarked them about a year ago um, as opposed to now. But look, I think it's very possible they're going to be there. I'm just saying this, them trademarking it doesn't increase my suspicion that we may see them. But I think it's very possible that they're there. Yeah, it sounds like uh, good timing. Is it related to Rogue One? I'm not sure about that. I never played The Force Unleashed, so I'm not sure what the connection would be if, mm -hmm. if, if there's even a need for Shadow Troopers. We know that we've seen some pics of what looks to be dead Stormtroopers, just normal run-of-the-mill Stormtroopers in Rogue One already. So maybe Shadow Troopers are another level above that that come in in the second half of the movie. Uh, I, I don't really know. I, sometimes lawyers just like to do this. Sometimes if Disney lawyers get bored, they're just like, oh, what do you guys want to do today? Go drinking? No, let's go <laughs> trademark some old stuff right. and make sure we get a few extra billion dollars. All right, what's next? Uh, next up is J.J. Abrams. Speaking of making billions and billions of dollars, you guys all know how successful The Force Awakens was, and it does appear that was the first and last time that J.J. Abrams will be directing a Star Wars movie. He is quoted as saying, it was a wonderful way to visit a place that meant so much to me and obviously so many. I knew that if it worked, it was the perfect time to step down. And if it didn't, nobody would want me to return anyway. So he's moved on to other projects, but he is still a producer on these Star Wars films. Christian, would you have wanted to see J.J. J.J. Abrams direct another Star Wars movie. Um, I still think he's going to be involved in another Star Wars project down the line. Now, whether or not that's uh, three, four years from now, or ten years from now, uh, don't don't. I wouldn't take him on his word here that he's not doing Star Wars ever again. He doesn't really ever say ever again. But I asked him when I got a chance to interview him um, for when I when I interviewed him for Fandango, like for, uh, during the for when the Force Awakens, just when it came out. I asked him about Netflix. I said if. Star Wars went to a Netflix series or any series in general, TV, and with his history on Alias and, and, and Lost and, and Fringe and all these shows that he's done, would that be something that he would be interested in should Kathleen Kennedy and whoever else approach him? And he was like, yeah, that's something I uh, would be interested in and it's something I'd listen to for sure. So, And I think that that's someone that they should go to if they ever do 
that type of project as, as a producer. Now, as far as directing, and if they did a series, you would assume he would direct at least one of those. Um, now, as far as a movie in general, I think it's too it's too hard to say whether or not he's returning. He just got done with The Force Awakens. He brought Star Wars back to, in, in the forefront, it's the, the highest grossing domestic in the United States release of all time. He has really set the bar for Ryan Johnson and, and um, Colin Trevorrow now. So right now, yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm good. I don't want to take it away from anybody. But I don't think we're going to – it's fair to say he's never going to do one again because we don't know what the future holds. How do you feel? I lo- First of all, I love whenever you interview somebody from Star Wars, the vice grip you put them in is to tell me the future of Star Wars. <laughs> like the <laughs> Netflix <laughs> thing is a very intriguing idea. And it's they didn't hear that, that one. They didn't hear that question. I, I think I think J.J. Yeah. Abrams would be perfect, at least suited for something like that. I don't think he's going to do another Star Wars movie because you got to remember what The ever. Force Awakens ever? was. I don't think he'll really? ever do another movie okay. because The Force Awakens was the biggest nostalgia trip of our lives. And we know from JJ's movies, he likes to play upon nostalgia. Go watch Super 8, something like that, where he likes to harken back to childhood Mm -hmm. and how that will factor into who you are as a human being going forward. I'm not saying that there's not going to be other Star Wars movies that use nostalgia as a tool, but you're never going to get it in as heavy a dose as you got it with The Force Awakens. That's why he was so perfectly suited to do it. We don't know what the Star Wars landscape is going to look like 10 years down the road, but we know that we're going to have this trilogy. We're going to go away from it. We're going to have more Star Wars anthology stories. They get further and further away from what we grew up knowing right. as kids you're not going to have the rogue ones or the han solos you might go to the knights of the old republic you might go to yoda's high school years but as you get further and further away from what we know i think that that maybe will detach jj abrams as a fan further and further away and he'll have the wherewithal to say i shouldn't be directing this might produce it might exec produce it not direct john is jj done as a director of star wars forever no chance in hell yeah. <laughs> no, no yeah. chance in hell like, just remind me quick this is the same guy who four years ago said i I'm not directing Star Wars. This is the same guy who a couple of years ago, just after the first Star Trek came out, said, I'm really looking forward to being involved as a storyteller still, but I'm going to let somebody else take the director's chair for Star Trek too. This is the same guy who told us, no, absolutely, Ben Cumberbatch is not con. <laughs> no, absolutely not. You know why? Because J.J. right now has, because of, look, J.J., he hasn't been success after success. He's had a few misses. He's, yeah. As any good filmmaker does, a few rare, swings and rare misses. misses. Yeah, yeah, rare misses. But he's had a few misses. But he's got himself to the point now with The Force Awakens. He's got himself up to one of the elite levels. Yeah. Okay, he's up there now. Yeah. At this point now, you make one great Star Wars movie. Bring Star Wars back to respectability. You bring Star Wars back to greatness. That puts you on that level. However... One Star Wars movie does not give you legacy. And I think that a guy like J.J. Abrams, and I know this is very athlete kind of terms, but I think a guy like J.J. Abrams now, right. with success in television, with he brought Star Trek back, which a lot of people thought couldn't be done, and he did it. He brought Star Wars back with a lot of help, but he was a very mm-hmm. key player. Yep. I think maybe not this year, maybe not next year, maybe not in 2018, but sometime soon, J.J. Abrams is going to start thinking about legacy. And when it gets to that point, him and Kathleen Kennedy, who will stay on talking terms, and he's going to be still plugged into the Star Wars universe, as you've mentioned, at some point, he's going to be back in that director's chair, and he's going to be establishing that legacy that we're going to be talking about for 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years. I totally agree. And I also agree that the thing is that if we if he waits 10 years, whatever, too, because remember, Bob Iger has made it very publicly known that they're going to keep making oh, Star Wars. Yes. Now with the rumor of the 10 films, too. JJ, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. I'm done. And then in five, six, seven yep. years, JJ Abrams is being brought back to Star Wars. The headlines, dun, 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 everything, the trumpets, boom, the trumpets and everything, too. Never since he has, this is the director's first return to the galaxy far, far away directing since The Force Awakens. You can see the headlines, people going crazy about it. So it's a good PR move, too, to say I'm not doing it right now. I get it. But, Mark, maybe you'll be right. I said it's not happening. Next topic. Next topic. What do you got? <laughs> You read oh, the there is another yeah, topic, yeah. right? I'll yeah, read it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you read the topic. Fine. Yeah. Let's talk about The Force Awakens, <laughs> the one movie that J.J. Abrams did in the Star Wars universe and the only movie he ever directed in Star Wars. They had their big premiere of the behind-the-scenes featurette that will be on the Blu-ray and all that good stuff. It's a little over an hour long. It was debuted at the South by Southwest Festival, so only people in the room could watch it and talk about it. One of those people happened to be Entertainment Weekly. They did give us some juicy tidbits as to what we're going to see, such as you get to see Daisy Ridley audition or the 
at least the story of her auditioning in the scene where her character is questioned by Kylo Ren. That might have been the tipping point scene when everybody's like, well, this kid has talent, we need her in the movie. Oscar Isaac originally was a little wary of playing Poe Dameron because the script had called for him initially to die early, and Oscar Isaac told J.J., he's like, look, I'm sick of dying early in all these projects. He didn't want to die that early. Uh, J.J. Abrams based the look of Maz Kanata on his bes bespectacled former teacher, Rose Gilbert, and Adam Driver had a little bit of extra motivation playing the role of Kylo Ren because the suit that he wore was so cumbersome, by the time it was ready to shoot, in his own words, he was so pissed, he felt ready. Christian, <laughs> are you even more excited yes. to see this feature? Yes, yes, yes. Very much so. Very looking forward to seeing all this stuff. I already was, but to hear it. And then there's, I think that they also are, um, there's like a behind the scenes where you have to see the, the fateful moment right before Han Solo and Kylo Ren are on that bridge. Um, so, uh, yes. Yeah. So anyway, so I, I think to me, I am very, very excited for this particular documentary for sure. John? I don't care. Unless you do. No, no, you know why? I don't what? care. No, unless I'm misunderstanding it, and which is totally. But I mean, I've been getting all the, the press stuff about. It. I've been getting all the releases about it. That this thing, if I'm not mistaken, this is a documentary, about, the featurettes that will be on the move on the Blu-ray. No, but I think there's some more. But I think there's 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 some more to it though. I think that if there's more stuff, to it, yeah. that intrigues me. But everything yeah. I've seen has been. This is like a trailer to a trailer to me. It's like, we're doing a documentary about right. the behind the scenes stuff you're gonna see on the Blu-ray. It's like, <laughs> I'll just wait to see the behind the scenes stuff right, on the right. Blu-ray. So I don't know, unless I'm totally misunderstanding the situation, which has been known to happen to quote C-3PO from time to time. <laughs> and so if that's the case, then then I'm gonna be curious. But as of right now, I'm just like, it yeah, seems if, like milking if, if it it's a bit. That, if it's that way, then yeah, I'm with you, but I, I don't, I think there's gonna be a lot more to it. I hope you're right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this thing for no other reason, just because you get to see like, like Making movies is such a headache, or at least it looks like one to me, that it's just never something I wanted to be involved in. And I want to get a chance to see the headache that is making Star Wars and see how people act on set. Like, I'm curious to see that behind the scenes making this thing that I love. Like, how did that, like, what was the scope of that actual thing going right. into it? That stuff always fascinates me. So I'm very excited to check this out. All right, how about you guys? Are you excited for that documentary uh, or th that featurette actually on The Force Awakens Blu-ray? What other topics that we covered so far in Star Wars movie news are you most excited about? Who do you choose for Han Solo? Chime in. We like to hear your voices. Click like, do the whole thing. Moving on to our next topic, or next not topic, but just a category in general here is something that we simply call... What's the deal with canon? Everything happening in the world of Star Wars that's not necessarily the movies, but relate to the movies. And it's comic books, it's video games, it's it's the shows, it's anything in general that is in the, the new expanded universe, that is, that is simply known as canon. Mark, what's first? Hello, Jerry. Up first is Rebels. We have the latest episode of Rebels, and it was one of Christian's all-time favorites. It's called The Forgotten Droid. Tell me about this program, good sir. I have forgotten about this whole thing, this droid this, this episode. Uh, it is the worst episode of Rebels uh, that I have seen <laughs> Whoa. ever. Uh, it, season one and two, and it is the one of the worst episodes I've seen in, in a Star Wars animation in general. And I and I hate to say it because I love this show. I continue to love this show. John was saying he didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, you literally you could skip this episode. You would miss nothing. You are not the first person to tell me that. You sir. would miss nothing. Because I was going to watch it last night, and our friend David Griffith, I yeah. ran into David, and I said, "Oh, no, I haven't watched the new episode, uh, the new episode yet." And he just looked at me, and goes, "No." no. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Our recap that we normally do, the Star Wars Rebels recap, was 12 minutes long yesterday. We had nothing to say about the. the we had wow. nothing to say about. Okay, so I remember when I read the descriptions of like the last five episodes, we were all getting jacked because maybe at the end we get to see like Darth Maul fight Darth Vader and like get to get a build up to that. But this one, it, even the description seemed like a little like really. That's the entire episode where Chopper basically he he goes to a new planet though, right? And no, then he finds it, another droid and they make out. They tr no, they don't make out, but they try to they try to do. They, it's a kind of a force C three PO R two D two relationship that it's ah, it's really forced. Okay. I just felt, and I said this in the recap, this could have been an episode that was the second or third episode of the season. It, they're getting, they just had that great episode, The Sh Shrouds of Darkness. Right, that yeah. Was one of the best episodes of all time, and the momentum just whoosh, right out of it because you put this there, and it's, it, it just, it's, it was, and I know what it was, it partially is because there's so many episodes. The other reason is the crew, 
Dave Filoni, all those guys, they love Chopper. They love him. They're talking about whenever there's a press conference or whatever it is, but they shouldn't have done a full episode on him. It just, and I like Chopper, I, but it's just a full episode he does not deserve. Here's you know? the thing. Like when I, I understand Dave Filoni loves Chopper yeah. and some of the crew love Chopper, but when I hear it, I feel like channeling my inner Christian Bale and just go, good for you. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> like, none of the rest of us do. I mean, he, he's I like, like Chopper a lot. No, I like just Chopper. Not a full episode. In the role that he plays in the show as the odd little yeah. comic relief and helping out here and there, he is a spot performer, right? And I was talking about this in my podcast the other day, but it just feels like, now, granted, I have not watched this latest episode. It's just hearing what I heard from David and then from people online and from yourself. I, look, going into season two of Rebels, my hopes were so high because we came off that incredible finale for season one, right? And there was so much promise going into this season. And the first half, we'll call it season 2A, the first half of the season, right? Yeah. Had some very good bright spots. But if we're going to be honest with ourselves. It's, where's the meat? Where's the meat? Where's the meat? Yeah. But we felt like, oh, it's coming though. Yeah. And then comes that trailer for ep for season 2B yeah. for the second half of season 2 which blew our pants off. We right. were so excited. And I'm going to tell you Rebels and everybody knows how big of a fan I am of this show. Rebels has failed to fulfill on the promise of either of those two trailers. There's now there's certainly been high points. The last episode is a break spot, but you can't have an episode like that and then follow it up with your B game. You cannot do that, especially when there's been a lot of pockets of time in this season that have felt like B game. Yeah. I'm thrilled that they went to a longer season. But look, Filoni, if you're not capable, I'll, I'll just call it what it is. You know I'm a fan. If you're not capable of delivering 18... 18 or 22, I can't Let's say it, yeah. 18 for argument's yeah, sake, yeah. okay? If you're not capable of delivering 18 quality episodes, then don't ask, I mean, maybe you were forced to, I don't know, but don't do an 18 episode season I, I if you're not that's, capable of it. I think that that's, like, first of all, the case is that he, you know, Disney is like, we want, it's doing well, we want to do, we want to do 18, are you up for the task? And of course he said, I'm up for the task. And I also think that sometimes it's, it's beyond his control as far as when maybe they even want to release. I'm sure he has somewhat of a say. I just personally think that the Chopper episode could have been pushed a little earlier, but I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna judge the whole season yet until I get those two final episodes. Well, that's what it's all about, right? Now, yeah. you have an opportunity here with these final two. Again, going kind of, kind of sports metaphor. You can finish strong. You finish strong right. with these last two episodes. You start to fulfill the promise of those amazing trailers that we saw. And look, if it looks like I'm getting a little bit upset, it's if I didn't give a crap about right. Rebels, I wouldn't care. Sure. I love this show. Right. And I, I'm, I'm so... The fact that I love it is what's hurting me when I'm realizing... My enthusiasm for the show has been doing this, and then they show a trailer and it goes way back up, right. and then they don't fulfill on the trailer. But, but Shroud, of Dark, strong. Shroud of Darkness went up and put you right up here because there was other. There, you love Space Whales. Badly. I, yeah, but I was the only person who was I in like the Space, space Whales. Did you like Space yeah, I like Whales? Space too, whales too. Right. Too. Everybody else is telling me I'm crazy. Finish strong. Yeah. I think they can still salvage this season. Yeah. They can still salvage the season if they finish. If the Twilight of the Apprentice is as good as we are hoping it yeah. will be. Great, but like I'm gonna tell you this, so I'm gonna feel really disappointed if that mall shot yeah. of "Call Me Old Master" is if that's like shot. the final shot in cliffhanger, I'm gonna feel no, no, ripped no, no. off. I, I, I really don't think it is. I think I will tell you this. I think that Darth Maul is gonna have a bigger role to play in season three, but I do think that he's gonna have. I think that he's gonna start to take Ezra down a different path. In this, I hope so. Because uh, if you do, you're going to finish strong yeah. and it'll salvage yeah. the season. All right, Mark, what's next? You guys uh, canceled the chopper cake. That I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Uh, well, we have a comic book that I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit more than the whatever, the Forgotten Droid. I already forgot the name of it. It's the final issue of Kanan. It's number 12. And if the cover is to be judged as an indicator of the rest of the comic book, Christian, looks like there's a lot of action and a lot of stormtroopers getting some heads cut off. Um, this is the last episode, the last issue of Kanan, and and I tell you, it was a great run. I really enjoyed this comic book very much, and I and I really enjoyed this last particular one. Um, I think Greg Wiseman did a great job. I hope they bring him back to do some other stuff. He obviously knew Kanan very well. We had the pleasure of speaking to him on this show, and we spoke to Freddie Prince Jr. on this show, who also raved about Greg Wiseman and and the way that he knows uh, Kanan and 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 this. What I think he does really well is tie in. Canon. He ties in Canon very, very well. Uh, Ray Sloan, 
who is a character that if you're reading all, all the canon and you're caught up with canon, um, you will know that she has made a bit of an impact on people too. And I, I enjoy the character of Ray Sloan very much. And people were asking, do you think Ray Sloan will appear in Rebels? Because she fits the timeline. She appears in this. And we got to finally see the first vision of her. And it tied into A New Dawn. So I think what it did, what Greg Wiseman did really well, and he also did this with an episode of Rebels, is that he did what I was hoping the entire world of canon would do. And they might still eventually but Greg Wiseman is doing it so well is he connects the tissue between Rebels mm -hmm. and this and then A New Dawn and this he is Greg Wiseman was very aware of all the stuff happening in canon in, in the time period he was writing it and I thought he did that flawlessly um, I thought he tied up the, the character of Kanan very well from start to finish it was a really great episode of Rebels I felt it was like if you read the whole series of Kanan um, oh the 12 this is number 12 all uh, right, this is issue 12. All yes. 12 of them. I think it's a great read, especially if you are a Rebels fan. John, I know that because of uh, you, you know the, the comics coming out on one issue, you're mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to just read one because they're too expensive. But now that all 12 issues are done, and because Kanan is your favorite character, mm, yeah. um, and because we talked about if they if they do connect canon and they pay attention the right way, that's something you're interested in. Now that all 12 are wrapped up, are you interested in reading this series? Yeah, actually, you got me turned on to the to this particular title about three issues in, and I've been excited. But again, I, I kind of made that rule for myself. I'm going to wait till the, the run, or at least the first uh, collectors, the trade comes yeah. out. And I, I'm hoping now that the series is ending, that that trade will come soon, because I'm looking to get caught up with everything you've been reading about. Yeah, it's really good. I really recommend it, especially if you're a Rebels fan and a Kanan uh, Jarrus fan. Okay, what's next? Uh, next up is, uh, for all you Battlefront fans out there, get excited for the universe to get a little bit bigger. The expansion pack Outer Rim is almost ready to launch for season pass owners. And there's a new map called Survivors of Endor that is going to be made free to download for all players as part of the March patch. Now, to get into specifics, uh, the Outer Rim expansion will be arriving on March 23rd. As part of that expansion, you have four different maps, one of which is Java's Palace. Christian, that alone is enough to get me back on the Battlefront wagon. How about you? This stuff is pretty cool. I know we've, I know we've talked about how Battlefront in general, it's been a, a bit of a letdown, and it's just after a while we all just kind of stop caring. But, but I'll be honest. Like I, I got this. I got the season pass here at the office too, and I, I want to. I'm gonna do now. How long I stay playing these new mm. runs is is a different conversation entirely. But will I go and check out how I can run around Java's palace and and see if I can sh you know, just blast the band that goes <laughs> like that, that, yeah, take them out? Um, but yeah, I would love to. I would love to play these new. I love the the idea of the outer rim doing some more. Uh, it. I know that we're not that that in general Battlefront, eh, but it's cool that they're still adding new stuff. I think you. I'm sorry. People still playing this game. Mm -hmm. I, no, sir, I, yeah. I like talking about not fulfilling on the promise. Uh, like to me, this was a game that I was. I didn't have a lot of interest in it at first, but man, they got me. They hooked me. The marketing campaign right. was brilliant for it. I got excited, and then a lot, like a lot of other people, once I got and started playing, I was like, eh. It just it wasn't that great of a right. game, and so look cool. Look, if like it's it's gonna be like the Kanan comic to me. Like you're gonna play it now. If you right. come to me, see John, these new levels, this these new worlds they've opened up. Right. You gotta check this out. Then I'm gonna hop back on and start playing right. again. But I gotta be honest, like just hearing the news about it isn't enough to get me re-energized about it. Mark, you've been playing Battlefront. I have been playing Battlefront. And so does this excite you? Under a secret code name. Uh, yeah, it does. But I've never been. I'm gonna sound like Andy Rooney from 60 Minutes here. I've just never been a big fan of expansion packs. You know, mm. like mm. what? Well, I paid for the game once. Why do I have to go get more packs? It doesn't make sense. I think they're free now, though. Yeah, they're free, but you still got to go through the way. Just give me the just give me the entire thing right. when I buy it. Once. Well, they're developing them all the time. I don't understand kids. <laughs> it's like Andy Rooney and Gilbert Godfrey. You're possessed by Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> hey, still, still on, on the expanded stuff here. Can I ask you a question? Because you just reminded me about something, yeah. and I don't know the answer to this. Do you remember? I don't know that we went into it on, in depth. Do you remember that whole going back to Rebels? There was a big hubbub going around online because people got on iTunes or on Google Play and they bought what they thought was the pass yeah, for Rebel yeah, yeah. Season 2 
and then the first half of the season ends, and then they start telling people you got to buy the second half of season two. And ever, did they ever fix that? I, I think that they did. Holy it's, crap! My wife was oh, mad. Oh, my brother was pissed she off. Was David Griffin got screwed. Like we, David and I talked about this on our Rebels recap, I think like two, three weeks ago. But yeah, so what John's referring to is that they, um, they, it was, it was a real, it was kind of a cr cruddy move because the second half they started charging people for season three. It was a douche move. And you're like, no, I paid for the whole thing. I apparently they were refunding people. Oh, that's okay. That's good. Now I wonder if people got their refund. You know, this is a great topic for you guys right now because I know this happened. Obviously, for you Star Wars fans out there that got screwed this way, did they refund your money? What we'll do is we'll let's go through those comments yeah. uh, this week and then good we'll idea. talk about it next week. Great idea. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll we'll find that out. Let us know if you got your money refunded for that. I don't uh, purchase content on <laughs> iTunes. I now, like a VHS. Now, uh, thank you, Mr. Rooney. We are going to actually talk to you guys now through Twitter. You guys have been submitting your questions, hashtagging it Collider Jedi Council. We have gone through them, and Mark is going to incorrectly read your names, and let's do it. Who's going to be lucky enough to get their name screwed up by this idiot? This this week. Up first is our Antares. Knocked it out of the park. Do you think we'll get an animated anthology movie? Hopefully better than the Clone Wars. I really liked this question. Um, I think that the Clone Wars, the Clone Wars movie really, really hurt a lot of people's perception of the Star Wars animated world. Mm. Because when I saw that movie in the theater, and this is coming from a Dave Filoni fanboy right now, I was cursing Dave Filoni when I got out of the premiere. I'm like, that guy's ruining so Star Wars with, with like, take your cowboy hat off, man. And like, I was just, I was so, I, I was like, so silly. Like, I, when, I, when I, and then I watched the series. So I remember the series debuted, and I'm like, great. We're going to have more of this crap from the movie that I saw, and I couldn't stand Ahsoka Tano. I thought it was horrendous. I'm like, why are you, for, you're ruining Star Wars more by putting this stuff on? And I love the Clone Wars. I think that the first two seasons were okay, and then three through six are incredible. So, um, that shows and rebels regardless of what we think about this chopper episode rebels has been a really great storytelling device for star wars so i think that animation could serve well in a in in a feature film i'd like to see it i think it could happen i don't think it's in the plans right now but i certainly think it could happen in the future i think it could work what about you i certainly dig this idea a lot of the way that marvel and dc will supplement their big budget live action movies with putting out feature link films that are animated and usually it's like direct to some sort of streaming device or download or whatever so i do dig this idea i don't know because clone wars that movie came out in theaters I right. believe yes. it was yes, released it in theaters. Yes, I don't know that they want to do that experiment again. But if it is something like you, you're talking about Netflix earlier, maybe this is how they they introduce new content on Netflix as an animated anthology feature length film. It'd be a pretty cool idea. You can do anything you want. It's animated. Not Rebels. Do you think an a anthology Star Wars film uh, animation could happen? If it wasn't for Rebels and Rebels showing us now I, again, I've, I've already expressed that I have some disappointment about season two, although, but it has some really good high points. Rebels overall is a show, shows that you can use the medium of animation to do some great storytelling that is indeed tied in to the ongoing cinematic universe. I would be shocked to find out if Kathleen Kennedy came in the door right now and said, we have no plans for an animated feature, even theatrical, I'd be shocked. Yeah. I think they do have plans. I think it's a natural expansion of what they're doing and they could tell it they could tell a story in the Outer Rim. If they're a little bit nervous about tying in because of the debacle that happened with the Clone Wars feature film, if they're nervous about that, fine. Tell a story that's in the Outer Rim that's maybe a little bit disconnected with a few little tie-ins if you want. I think it would be a missed opportunity if they didn't sometime in the next six, seven years do an animated feature. I don't disagree with you at all because another reason they're part of Disney slash Pixar. Yep. <laughs> they, they got some, yeah. they got some they, experience the there. Champions of animation <laughs> right now. If Imagine if if Disney right now, who is on fire with uh, Zootopia and Frozen and Wreck-It Ralph, if they released a Star Wars animation film, um, the, the, the numbers could be pretty great. Could be with impressive. New, and new characters they could they could uh, debut as well too. You could do a Ray one if you wanted to. You could do something else, but you could also debut new characters. Well, let me ask you boys something. I know you guys are big fans of Rebels. I like Rebels too. I just don't have time to cat, you know keep up with it. Uh, if they announce that they're going to make a Knights of the Old Republic Star Wars movie and it's going to be animated. Mm. You'd be a little disappointed, right? I'd be fully on board. I, I'll tell you, wouldn't I'll tell you, you rather have a live action? Here's why. Yes, Here's why I'd I get rather on board. have a li live but I agree, but, and I think you're going to say the yeah. same thing I am here. I think 
The Old Republic represents a little bit of a challenge to Lucasfilm and Disney right now. As far as, okay, you got your hardcore of the hardcores mm -hmm. that know Old Republic and have and care about it. An animated feature of the Old Republic could increase the chances of a live action Old Republic. So in that, first of all, I'd be fine with an animated Old Republic film on its own, but knowing that I think that that would open up the door even wider for the possibilities of then branching out into live action, I think it helps the idea of that, and mm -hmm. so I'm totally up for it. I am on, for that reason, I totally agree, because there's two ways to really make the Old Republic work, and it's doing um, an Old Republic movie with big stars to really sell because no one's going to like the casual fan will not know what it is or what it's about or yeah. thousands of years before like wait what like who are these new you got to put a star in there to which really Skywalker's sell it. in it right yeah. you got to sell it but another way is to do it the anime the animated way um, but you can also do that but that's why I'm, I'm I've still and it's not just because I'm at Netflix or Amazon on the brain right now it's just I think that if you're gonna do any type of Star Wars series like television series it should be the Republic I think it lends itself to that Game of Thrones type feel so um and you know why else it lends itself to it because because it's two three however many thousands of years yeah. in the past right their hands are completely untied right. they can do whatever they want in those movies and not worry about the repercussions of the ongoing movies right. they would have total creative freedom that's a property you can explore with netflix amazon hulu whatever but what they need to do in whatever whether it's animated or live action they need to set if they're going to do a republic they don't need to do it if they're not if they have no plans to do a republic but they need to set up the old republic in one of the big movies they need to mm -hmm. set it up in episode eight or nine or reference it get people question yep. get people asking totally What's agree the old republic who's uh, who's darth bane like like they should have these questions out there because that lends itself to spinning off yep. like because if you're putting some of the biggest movies out there and but if you just randomly do it it's going to be a harder mountain hard sell yeah all right what's next uh well next up is a blue birdie that definitely speaks my language it's holy hot cakes batman no, is our writer nope. no, uh, it is not. mike no, it is at not. don't no, drop the mic I just want to say holy hotcakes Batman. Who would not want to say he that? He made that up, didn't you? Seriously, if you guys had a mic plugged in, you'd say holy hotcakes Batman. <laughs> Do you think we will get a mention of Revan in Rebels' Malachor episode, finally making him canon? Now, if you guys don't know who Darth Revan is, speaking of the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic, one of the best characters in, in old, um, what is now Legends to date. It is a, it, it, it was one of my favorite storylines and I still will say this, Empire Strikes Back is my favorite story in Star Wars history, and the Knights of the Republic is my second favorite Star Wars story, as far as story goes. Um, but I, but it's legends now. But Revan, Revan was supposed to be canon. He was supposed to be canon in the Clone Wars. George Lucas himself, was. it was Darth Bane and Revan in the, um, in the Son of Mortis episodes, in the Mortis episodes, they were going to make him canon and lucas at the last minute was like i don't know if it really fits right now so <laughs> he decided not to do it darth bane certainly became canon in season six yeah i think feloni ha is is very aware of the old republic and i think it is possible to go to this planet is it going to happen this season i tend to say no mark uh i don't have a lot to say on this matter christian okay. next <laughs> uh brilliant look revan <laughs> may be legends right now but you and I know he has been used in a lot of legends. Yeah. Like when all the, like he's been used in video games, he's been used Books. in novels in the novelizations, yeah. he's been used in a lot of different ways. And he there are action figures of Darth Revan that are out there. When it like granted, he's in that category that only the hardcore of the hardcore is known, but he's damn popular amongst that yeah. group. I do think they're going to make him canon. I do think they're going to use Rebels to do it, but I this, don't think okay. it's going to happen until season three. Right. I tell you this too: you see one of those Darth Revans at every like convention yep. we go to in yep. cosplay. They're all we'll see him next weekend at WonderCon. I guarantee it. All right. What's next? All right. Is it Holy Hotcakes Batman? <laughs> We're hoping for Holy hey. Hot. Yay! At Batman works out. You damn right he does. There should be an anthology movie of Yoda. Maybe him and his prime are learning the force from his master. Thoughts, guys? You got a good fight. Yeah. Thanks. Good sell. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I I am not sold on on. A, I'm just not sold. On, well, like, 
there's part of me, there, there's two sides to it. The first side where I'm just like, no way, no thanks, is I like Yoda being kind of shrouded in mystery and, and I don't need to see how he became all powerful and I don't want him to do another flipping around uh, lightsaber battle and then pretending he's on a cane. I, I just want to see him as the guy, the, the, the I don't even know what species he is, uh, from, from Empire Strikes Back and, and that kind of Yoda is Yoda. I'd like to say, I'm now I'm all for him coming back as a Force Ghost in Episode Eight. I do think that's going to happen and I would <clears throat> welcome it. I can't wait to hear Frank Oz, and I liked his appearances so far in Rebels. The other side of me goes, it would be kind of interesting to see a, a young, spry, 150-year-old Yoda uh, <laughs> running around on, on whether it's a battlefield, and what a way to introduce us to the Old Republic through Yoda. I mean, because if they wanted to, they'll remember this. You know, and I'm sure it's, I'm going to ruin one of the Twitter questions here, too, is that Legends Old Republic is about 4,000 years old, 4,000, 3,000 years old. No one says that they have to stick to that. Old Republic could mm. be 400 years right. old. And Yoda's 700. 900. When, when Is he, it 900? When 900 years old, you'd be. Uh, I thought it was 700. See, so yeah, yeah. I stand corrected. He's like, he, 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 I, I think that Yoda fudged his age a little bit. I think he's around 855 <laughs> right. in Empire. Give or take. And I think he's about 870. So once you get into like 870, you can say I'm 900 years old. Right. So I think that that would be... <laughs> that was something that I'd be very excited about. If they were going to introduce us to the old republic through yoda that's a way you can do it to new to new um you know if to casual fans because they know yoda and now you're introduced to this time period and you can expand about you know when yoda's like 50. that'd be very interesting and you've been you've been kind of high on a yoda movie. i have been championing a yoda movie forever and i don't want to see it i don't want to see a yoda centric huh. movie that's young i love the way yoda's utilized more so as just a character that's shrouded in mystery i like seeing him as a smaller character that has a huge impact on the world around us so you don't see him that much in empire you know he's got a part in it but Oh my God, the impact he has. I want that kind of Yoda, regardless of what time period we're going for. Now look, I love the idea of Yoda with a full head of hair and a varsity jacket, hanging out at the hamburger stand after his classes ended before football practice. But I don't want to see a movie about it, yeah. you know? I want to see a young Yoda. I want to see him, how differently he was acting when he was 50, 100, before he got all the way up to 900. But I don't want to see a movie about Yoda. I don't want the, the movie to be called the Yoda anthology movie. I want it to be called like a Knights of the Old Republic movie or some other movie and he's featuring there. Yoda. Right. John? Oh, oh boy. Go home! Uh. You're drunk! <laughs> No, I don't want a Yoda standalone. Why does every freaking thing with a Star Wars anthology film have to be with stuff we've already got? The, one of the reasons I'm so excited about Rogue One is because, now granted, Vader will make an appearance, but it's not a Darth Vader film. It's going to be led by characters. You don't know that. Uh, well, don't know that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be led by yeah. characters that we haven't met before, looking at an angle of the Star Wars universe that we have not explored yet. I Look, I love Yoda. I think Yoda's great, but I don't want to see a young Yoda movie. I want them to use these anthology films to start expanding our understanding of the Star Wars universe. I like what you were saying about Maybe he becomes our gateway drug to the old republic, but I want the old, old republic. I, I don't even want Yoda in that. I want something new. I want to expand. All right, and I, what if he's a youngling in the old republic? Well, even then, see, I, what I don't want is a Star Wars. Like, and I'm all about CG. I'm all about visual yeah. effects. I love them, but I don't want a live action film that's led by a CG character yeah. either. So for me, no. Now, hypocrisy, the moment they announce a Yoda standalone yeah, be, movie, yeah. and it opens at the AMC Burbank 16, I'm freaking there in line first right, day, obviously, but I want something else. I'm with you. You know, you know what I would actually really be up for is a Yoda novel. Like a Yoda... That could be interesting. A Yoda novel as far as how he started and getting into that because you can envision it. You don't have to just see the CGI character yeah. the entire time, and you can introduce, and that's another way to introduce us again to the to the old republic probably not the mass effect that you would get if you did it in a in a feature film but i would be very interested to I, that i'd love to learn i love learning more knowledge about these guys through books and comics so i'd be up for that and won't, won't be surprised if that happens they're doing a lot of comics like han solo's getting his own comic mm -hmm. and lando had his own comic leia um so don't be surprised that happened in comic form although i would prefer to, to read a yoda novel all right what's next next up is efridge turner Sweet, Star Star Efridge oh, Turner writes, will we see a younger Han Solo or an older Han Solo for Rogue One since the casting is down to three actors? Well, again, we don't necessarily know if it's down to three. Those are just the three that they're talking about right now. 
I don't think we're getting Han Solo in Rogue One. Now, now I think that some people think that because why the hell would they announce it? It's only two years out, and they're going to announce Han Solo already. Um, why would they do that? They could wait a little bit. I don't know. They, they, it's been about two years out or a little less when they announced the cast for Episode 7. So <laughs> They announced The Rock as Black Adam five, five years, years five. before Shazam was coming <laughs> I out. I don't even think that's going to happen. I think he's going to play Lobo. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, so I don't think we're going to get him at all. And I also, the, the thing is, it's kind of, it, it wouldn't fit time-wise. If it's any of those guys, it wouldn't you know. fit. These two, because all those guys are in their early 20s. Um, you, you could even say some of them passed for 20. Like, and I, uh, Han Solo was 30 years old, 32 years old by the time that movie took place. And I think that unless you, you try to put makeup on him and make him look older, and say like just stay away from it in general. So I don't necessarily want to see him in Rogue One. What do yeah, you well, what, what you got to keep in mind, too, is that Rogue One is done shooting. Yeah, it's done. It's wrapped. It's in the can. They, the, they could shoot some special they, scenes. They could. Sh they could. But like we are, the the clock's now ticking. I yeah. mean, they are. They have wrap production now. If you wanted to talk about, hey, let's shoot a little mid credit scene or something like that, that that's totally possible. That is possible. But for him to actually have a role in the film, however big or small, like even a Luke Skywalker kind of role, I think it's too late for that. I think yeah. we're beyond that. I agree. You don't necessarily have to see his face though. You know, you That's could have true. some yeah. sort of yeah. hint at Han Solo mm -hmm. without, like, you know, hitting you over the head. Well, oh, hey, look, this is our new boy. Tom Holland was cast as Spider-Man. We're like, oh, are they going to be able to get him in this movie, you know, in time? He was cast as Spider-Man June 23rd of 2015, which gave them almost an entire year. They have a lot less than that. If they made their decision today, they would have to do a lot of it. Work but but when they announced his casting. Yeah, the movie was still shooting. The movie they was were still, still shooting, in production. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but I, I maybe a, a post credit scene if Star Wars wants to go that way, which I would be all for for the anthologies. I think it'd be awesome. Mm. But uh, I think you might get a hint to Han. So maybe you see the Millennium Falcon. Oh, um, yeah, that's maybe. a nice idea. All right, what's next? Um, Lee Knight writes: Do you think all the spinoff movies will be prequels, or will we get spinoffs set alongside the new episodes? Do you think all the spinoff movies will be prequels? Um, I think that it's going to be a mixture of both. I think it'll be definitely a mixture of both because we, we're looking at 10 movies here, too. We don't, and even though they talked about the Boba Fett movie, which I'm really rooting against, I don't want to see a Boba Fett movie at all. Um, but I think that if they do a Boba Fett movie, I think it would make sense to do it after the Sarlacc Pit. That, to me, is a more intriguing Boba Fett story than how he became Boba Fett and yes. if he was a clone or, like you said, like what... Like what he watches on, on Netflix. I, I don't care about that stuff. I just want to know what happened to him afterwards and how to get into that mobster world. That's a cooler way. Now, as far as will the rest of them be prequels, if we go into the Old Republic, obviously those are kind of those are prequel-esque. But if we go into things, I think that there's such a time gap now between like Jedi and The Force Awakens. Yep. There's a lot to do there. So I absolutely think there'll be some movies because we're going to learn more and more about the lore. We're going to learn more about the, the history of Star Wars. And you'll be like, I want, an, I want a Knights of Ren movie. I know you're not big on it, but I, I would be very curious. We're going to learn more about the Knights of Ren. I want to see more about the Knights of Ren. I th I'd be okay with a, a Luke Skywalker recast as a younger as a younger man, like in his you know 30s and 40s, starting the, the Jedi Academy and, starting, and, and watching what happens as the Knights of Ren start to take over. It's kind of like Force Awakens point five, but you know, but I'm okay with that. I just there's there's I think that time period is what I'm trying to say is is kind of ripe for new storytelling. See, I want to see Boba Fett after the Sarlacc Pit incident with the qualifier that he had to have survived. If he didn't survive the Sarlacc Pit, that's a really boring you don't want movie. you don't want Dread Pirate Robert with just the you no, don't want Weekend at Bernie's no, with Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah, I just don't want to see the Sarlacc Pit burping for two hours. Like he had to survive <laughs> the pit. If he did, that'd be a great story. That fan made trailer still might be my favorite of all time. The Boba Fett walking it's away from one. the Sarlacc Pit. It's pretty sweet. So yeah, yeah, there's tons of stories you can go anywhere you want. Make a lot of these, John. Uh, you're right about everything i mean i think it will be a mixture of the two because look some of the best role i've done a lot of role playing uh with uh, the star wars stuff and some of the best role playing games are set in the concurrent time mm -hmm. so what it's our own story going on at the same time that the story of the empire and the rebellion is going on and those are great you can tell those stories i'm fascinating to fascinated to find out what goes what's going on in another part of the system while the star killer base is you know wreaking havoc in right. the galaxy i'm curious about that but you're also really dead on about the boba fett thing like i would rather not 
But if you're going to do a Boba Fett movie, you I believe you have to start it post Jedi. Because even though Return of the Jedi is 30 years ago, at that point, it's a modern film. Because if you set up Boba Fett movie before the events of Return of the Jedi, any time before the events of Return of the Jedi, we know the outcome. Right. We know where he ends up. We know where it's going. And it's just another prequel film. However, even though it's 30 years in the past, you pick up Boba Fett coming out of that Sarlacc pit. Yep. It's a it's a completely blank slate. you don't see him in The Force Awakens. He can yeah. die yep. at the end of that movie. Yep. He can he can start the Knights of Ren. He, I mean, that's ridiculous. But right. anything is possible at right. that point. So if you're going to do it, you're 100% right. That's the way to do it. All right. What's next? Cody Griffin writes, there was news about this before The Force Awakens, but what hope is there for a David Fincher Star Wars film, and what would it be? Um, there was a lot of chatter about David Fincher when the four, well, it wasn't The Force Awakens, when Episode Seven was announced, because David Fincher basically started his career at Lucasfilm, mm -hmm. worked on Jedi, by the way, um, but he had made some comments that the problem I think is that they're similar like if why you'll never get a Quentin Tarantino or a Edgar Wright movie is because those are specific directors to what they do there's the, the Quentin Tarantino does Tarantino movies um, it, now Fincher's a little bit different he does a little bit more he does done adaptations and stuff too but he is a guy that you want is going to want to have I don't think he's going to want to be as not that Disney's going to handcuff but you know what I mean? Like it's just it's it's a staying in the reins of the Star Wars movie. He's gonna mm. want to do something different. He's even made comments about it. I think of why he didn't do Episode <laughs> Seven because I think they talked to him. I'm pretty sure they did. They talked to him, right? So I think that I just don't see that particular marriage happening. Do you do you think it'll happen? Oh, I totally see it you happening. Think, think it's gonna, happen? it's gonna like be set. Film? It's gonna be set in the older public era. <laughs> it's gonna about be about this socially outcast inward. <laughs> Turn, but brilliant kid who comes up with the first design for a lightsaber and then Darth Revan comes along and says he designed the lightsaber and there's this iconic scene where that kid says if you could have designed the lightsaber you would have designed the lightsaber it's going to be awesome it's going to have Oscars written all over it they have a meeting it. with a young charismatic Yoda who's like the Sean Parker yes, in the movie yes exactly yeah, like, do you going? think it'll really happen um, you Anthology, know what you I, I, I think you I think you nailed it I think, yeah. I think it is very possible because remember we're no longer talking about this isn't the DC Cinematic Universe. This isn't even the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is Star Wars, yeah. where Disney's already said, we have no plans to stop this. So we don't have to worry about the next three, four, five years. I really do believe I could see a David Fincher doing a Star Wars film, an anthology film, absolutely, that has his own tone. That, st that stuff we've been talking about all the time, we would love to see a Star Wars mafia movie. Yeah. We'd love to see a Star, whether it's focused on the Huts or the Black Sun or anything like that, that's a movie I think he could wrap his head around. That's, I think, right. a movie he could sink his teeth into. I think that's a movie we're going to get from him. Eventually. Yeah, it's a really appealing thing for a director, even somebody who, you know, wants to work on their material as much as, like, David Fincher or, Tarant or you know, Tarantino. They have these, these set ideas of what they want to do with their movie. To be able to walk into Lucasfilm and they say, hey, here's our universe, not with one of the trilogy movies, but with an anthology movie. What story do you want to tell? What time period do you want it to be? Right. That's a lot of creative freedom in yeah. there. I think David Fincher will do a Star Wars movie before J.J. Abrams does another Star Wars movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I just, I, I want to, I wish I knew, like, the preferences of every director in Hollywood, like the yeah. big ones, I mean, like so, so, to know which guy is like, oh, because there, everyone's, everyone you interview, they say, oh, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. They kind of shaped my, my career, a lot of them. But who's the hardcores? Like, who are the hardcore fans out of there that, that know about, like, the Old Republic and know about all the, the like, it, whether or not they want to take Boba Fett after the Sarlacc pit and because he's done this, he's a Mandalorian. He's like, who are the guys out there that, or ladies out there who have, like, the, 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 the take on Star Wars and who's been meeting with Lucasfilm? Yeah, who, who sits in a room and, and Kathleen Kennedy's like, what do you think about Boba Fett getting out of the Sarlacc pit? And they're like, what the hell is a Sarlacc pit? Right. Like, you worry about them. Right. Uh, okay, what's next? Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez writes, do you think we will see Quinlan Voss appear on a future season of Rebels. Maybe he survived Order 66? Um, now, Quinlan Voss is, he actually has been in one of the movies before. He was in The Phantom Menace. Um, he, he's sitting in the, it's during it's during Tatooine. He's sitting in the back. It's kind of how the character was developed because uh, George Lucas liked the way he looked. I like the way that guy looks. Um, but uh, you, uh, is he going to show up again? If he's going to show up, I think it'll be in, in Rebels. Uh, is, that, is that the question? Is for will he pop up in Rebels? A future yeah. season of Rebels because maybe he survived Order 66. If he's going to show up, it's going to be in Rebels. It's not going to be in a feature film. And I think that it's also because Dave Filoni has been known to bring back 
characters from mm-hmm. Clone Wars. He's done it a few times already this this season, and he probably could do it again. Um, we know uh, that he uh, he look. If this question is being asked, it's a spoiler for you. He survives Dark Disciple. Spoiler for you. I'm sorry, but it's like it's a matter of uh, the question was already asked. So there you go. Uh, John, will Quinlan Voss show up in Rebels? Um, n- certainly not this season. You know, if it wasn't Dave Filoni doing it, I'd say no. Yeah. But I, th- I think you're right. I think it's, it is Dave Filoni. I think he's a resource, and he's been used in multiple platforms already. It would uh, kind of seem like a waste not to use him at some yeah. point. Season 3, Episode 9. Take it to the bank. Enjoy the return of Quinlan Voss. You have no idea who that is. Okay. I, <laughs> all right, guys. Remember this happened. All right. So, first of all, happy St. Patty's Day. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us here. I'd also like to wish a very special happy birthday to Jedi Council Watcher, Cody Miller. Thank you for all the support, Cody. Um, and we are going to be here next week. Tiffany may or may not be back. I don't know yet. We'll keep we'll keep you <laughs> updated and let you know. But I'd like to thank the council today. First of all, Obi John Kenobi, John Campia, where can they find you? You guys can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all over the place uh, at John Campia. You can pick up my novel, The Pride, which is on Amazon right now. Just head on over there and search for The Pride. Mark two D two. Where can they find you? Kind of. I sir. also have a novel. I read that wrong. It's actually a podcast I yeah. do with Christian called Schmoes No Live. Our live show is tonight. Actually, it's every Thursday night, seven to nine p.m. PST. It's a cavalcade of fun. You can follow me on Twitter at Mark Ellis Live. I'll be at the Comedy Store this Saturday. Now I'm not gonna. Uh, <laughs> that, what do you think? You just wanted to throw a cup. Well, he did John it. got to. Fair. So all right. And okay. I, that's not my usual throwing motion. I usually have a pretty good fastball, as you've seen. You do. I, I just kind of. Yeah. All right. For me, at Christian Hart off twitter instagram you can find me here you can find me at movie talk uh monday through thursday for sure but i am not going to let john campy off the hook here because we have the movie (laughs) trivia schmodown that is coming up it is coming up on the 25th that is our debut episode and who better to debut the episode it will be John La Cosa Nostra Campia versus Dangerous Dan Merle, the reigning movie fights screen junkies champion. There has been so much smack talk. If you guys don't know what this is, the movie trivia contest, three rounds, brutal movie trivia. These guys are going to go head to head. Campia, you have been talking some legendary smack to the uh, reigning champion of screen junkies. Any thoughts on your opponent? Any thoughts going into the matchup? Well, okay, first of all, let's be clear. Uh, This. This whole thing should be an event, not an ongoing show, because I know you got Roca and you got JTE. And the champ, Mark and Riley. You got Mark Riley and you got uh, Scott Mance and you got Josh McCuga and you got Clark Wolf. Undercarders. Complete <laughs> undercarders. Everybody's an undercard. Because oh. right here is the main event. This is it. And you know what? Dan Merle. Oh, oh, I'm the movie fights champion. Good for you. You are the big fish in a very little pond. But now you're coming into the ocean. You know what the ocean is filled with? Sharks. And this is the great white filthy right here, pal. Bring everything you got because you're leaving in tears. <laughs> the great white, white filthy, filthy I Christian. Love the guy it. coins new nicknames every Man, time he opens filthy. his mouth. And I'll tell you what, Dan Merle had a pretty good response video to him. I can't wait to see what Merle comes up with. We have... A little over a week until this matchup actually happens. There, Batman v Superman is the undercard no, to this. Yeah, and there's a way for you guys to get involved because we're going to be actually reading your tweets during the Schmodown. So all you have to do is that you hashtag Schmodown, give your thoughts on whether or not you want to talk about Campia Merle, John Roker versus Scott Mance, Sam Levine versus Hal Rudnick. You want to talk about any That's of those gonna matches? That's going to be good be too. Any of those matches, do it. It's coming up March 25th. Subscribe here if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. May the force be with you, always. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.